One of the biggest concerns people mentioned in my survey with 250 responses was bone loss. People on prednisone are so concerned about bone loss, and that's for good reason. And the reason I did this survey was because I was heading to Harvard Medical School for a seminar. And at this seminar, a professor at Harvard gave a presentation about preventing osteoporosis. So I was thrilled that I could answer so many of these questions for you. So here are some of the questions people asked, and then I will get to Dr. Naomi Patel's answers. First question is, now that I've tapered off, will my hair and bone conditions improve? Another is, at what dose is prednisone most damaging to my organs, bones, and blood? What is in this medicine that attacks the bones? What's the best way to control side effects? How to minimize muscle and bone loss? What can be done to reduce the negative impact on bones and skeletal muscles? What can I do to help while on prednisone for bone loss? And so many more. So I'd like to focus on that as the theme is what can I do to help while on prednisone for bone loss? So let's cover what Dr. Patel taught us. At what dose is prednisone most damaging to bones? The professor at Harvard explained that doses over seven and a half milligrams, especially for long periods of time, significantly increase the risk for osteoporosis, fractures, and other organ damage. But here's the kicker. Even lower doses, less than seven and a half milligrams, can cause harm, especially if taken for a long time. It's not just about the dose. It's also about the duration of time. The longer you're on prednisone, the higher the risk. The highest risk is after about three months, and the risk is still there at at least 12 months. Another one said, I'm only 39 and already have osteoporosis from years of prednisone for lupus. Yes, even young people can get osteoporosis. Another one said, what is in prednisone that attacks the bones? The Harvard professor explained, first, Prednisone increases the activity of cells that break down bone. These are called osteoclasts. So it's accelerating the breaking down of bones. That's the first way. The second way is it suppresses or blocks cells that are the builders of bones called osteoblasts. Blasts, builders, both we'll start with B. That's how you can tell the difference. And so you're breaking them down and you're not building them up fast enough. It's the combination of those two. And then number three, it's reducing calcium absorption in your gut. So your body pulls calcium from your bones instead to keep the right balance in your blood. So basically a normal diet doesn't have enough calcium because you're just not absorbing enough calcium. You're slowing down the absorption. So what can you do to fight back? Well, Dr. Patel quoted the guideline for glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis. This was created by rheumatologists across the world. Their expertise to see all the things that you can do to minimize your risk. First, they said to quit smoking. That increases your risks for osteoporosis. Second, minimize or stop drinking alcohol. That also worsens bone loss. Third is to take calcium and vitamin D. So something like Neutronized Zone has calcium and vitamin D in it. In addition to things like vitamin K2 and magnesium, you have to be supplementing because you can't get enough from just your diet alone. Fourth, do weight bearing exercises like walking or resistance training. These have shown benefits for people with arthritis and arteritis. Lots of different types of inflammation have shown fantastic benefits from exercise. Things like reduced inflammation. So often for diseases like polymyalgia rheumatica, they'll measure blood markers of inflammation like the CRP, the C-reactive protein, or the ESR, urethrocyte sedimentation rate. And those are usually less in people who exercise than in those who don't. Exercise has been shown to decrease blood pressure, whereas prednisone increases blood pressure. So you're directly fighting against that side effect. And it decreases your heart disease risk. Prednisone can increase your heart disease risk from two to four times, depending on what study you're looking at. And finally, it improves your quality of life. Instead of suffering prednisone side effects, you're finding ways to deal with it. I'd like to throw another one out there that people on prednisone often feel kind of like a wound up toy that just needs to 
let the energy out. And exercise is a really good way to let out the anxiety, to let out that cooped up feeling, that anxiousness that prednisone just kind of gives you, the jitteriness. Moving your body, just walking can be so powerful in helping to release that pent up tension to improve your mood. So what if you already have osteoporosis? What can you do? Well, they mentioned a few medications and it depends on your risk for complications. Then they rank you based on low risk to high risk to very high risk. And there are different treatments options and things like bisphosphonates like Fosamax are basically a great option for most people. Now, if you're wondering, oh, aren't bisphosphonates so dangerous and horrible? Prednisone is the most dangerous. <laughs> and so if you're taking another medication with risks, definitely, they are less risky than prednisone. And I, if it were me, I would be taking Fosmax or another bisphosphonate to prevent those complications. Osteoporosis runs in my family. I don't wanna get it. I don't wanna shrink. I don't wanna have pain in my back. I don't want to break any more bones. And they have even newer treatments. So definitely talk to your doctor about it and get that risk assessment done to see your specific risk because it depends on your risk which treatments are worth it for you. So get a DEXA scan, talk to your doctor about that and use the calculator to see your, it's called FRAX, F-R-A-X, to see what your risk for osteoporosis is taking prednisone increases your risk by a lot. And then if you're someone who is white, female, postmenopausal, a low weight, and many other factors, your risks just keep climbing. And so you can use that calculator to see what your personal risks are. Okay, so to summarize, these are the words of the Harvard professor. I'm just going to read them. For all individuals on glucocorticoids, Supplemental calcium, vitamin D, weight-bearing exercise, and avoidance of smoking and excessive alcohol is encouraged. For those at very high risk, and that includes anyone greater than or equal to 30 milligrams of prednisone for 30 days, consider anabolic agents. So getting prescription medication that's even more intense than bisphosphonates. And if you're wondering, is there anything else I should be doing to prevent complications? Because it's not just osteoporosis. It's that heart disease, it's diabetes, and so many other, up to 150 side effects are attributed to prednisone. So if you wanna know what else can you possibly do to minimize your risk for side effects, just click the link below to download my prednisone checklist. It includes everything we've talked about today and so much more. So you know exactly what to do to minimize your risks for complications, to make every single milligram matter, and to make it so that you're doing all that you can do to keep your body as healthy as possible while taking prednisone. Just click the link below to download the prednisone checklist now. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.